Hello and welcome. My name is Mickey Burdick. This series of Vectorworks 2025 videos is going to walk you through a lot of the really detailed nuts and bolts of getting started in working with Vectorworks 2025 as a scenic designer. Um, before we get into those actual videos, though, I wanted to do a really quick one that was kind of a quick start guide so that before you start watching those videos, take 10 minutes, take 15 minutes to start playing around with the program and at least get a sense of some of the things that you can do in this space. So to that end, I'm going to just show you a couple of the more important things, and hopefully you can take this and run around and start playing on your own. Of course, what I'm going to show you in this video, there are much more efficient and often better ways to be doing these things. But as a jumping off point, this is sort of the easiest introductory way to get you going. So up here in the top left is your basic tool palette. This is where you'll find most of the tools you're going to need. If you hover over any of them, it'll bring up a little description of what the tool does and a couple of hints on how to use the tool. This one, for example, is the rectangle tool. I'll select that. One click will set the edge, uh, the corner of a rectangle, and the next click will finish it. As we are drawing any shape, you will see in the blue dialog box here, just to the bottom right of your cursor, you'll see the dimensions appear in there. So that'll tell you how large of a thing you're drawing. If you want to do something really precise, you can actually hit tab and enter that dialog box. I want this to be 10 foot. Tab again will take you over here by 6 foot. Hit return, and there is your box. This tool here is your selection tool. It's a great tool and it allows you to modify shapes and to select shapes. So if it's outlined in orange, that means that that object is selected. Click on here, and now this one is selected. From here, I can grab any of these and pull and shape this however I want. When you get this little crosshairs, uh, when your cursor turns into that, you can actually grab objects and move them. So this is a very important tool. As you're moving objects and looking at different objects, you can hit Shift as you select objects, and that will allow you to select multiple objects. Let's look at just one object real quick, this one here. This is the one we made that was 10 foot by 6 foot. You'll see that if you come over to the object info over here. It'll tell you the width and it will tell you the height. It will also tell you the area of that. So, aside from just telling you what it is, you can also modify shapes from the object info. So we have our 10 foot by 6 foot. I want it to be 6 foot square. As you're working, um, punch things in in terms of feet and inches. You can either use straight inches, which does not need anything after it, no punctuation. If you're punching in feet, you need to add the apostrophe after it. Uh, if you're using inches, you would use the quotation mark, the double apostrophe. So that's sort of the basics. You can also use lines, circles, etc., etc. In addition to simply creating shapes, there are some tools over here that will allow you to modify. Uh, so get in and start playing with those. Here's your rotate tool. So with that selected, well, that's not going to work great on the circle, is it? Um, but let's say we are selecting this square and we want to rotate it. Select that. And then one, two, three clicks, and you can spin things around. The mirror tool is lovely as well. I use that all the time. And you can use that to mirror objects across any plane that you create. I will select multiple of these and delete. Now, the real power of Vectorworks comes not just in 2D modeling, but in 3D modeling. To get into a 3D view, you can look up here. This is your view bar. You can change it from top plan view, which we're in now which gives you the illusion that you're looking at a sheet of paper. If we're in top plan, this is what will appear on your paper, right? But we can take that and we can move into an isometric view or something that will better showcase uh, the 3D capabilities. This flyover tool is another one you should really um, you should really get comfortable using. There are easier ways to use it, but for now, just click up here, flyover tool, and then you can grab anywhere in your drawing 
and move around. Hopefully you're using a mouse to work with VectorWorks. That makes things much, much easier if you are. The scroll wheel will zoom you in and out. So that's a pretty efficient way to get in and out of your work. Now we have a couple of flat surfaces here. Selection tool. If we wanted to bring those up into the three, uh, 3D world, what we need to do is extrude them. A couple ways to do extrude, but the easiest way for a beginner is going to be up in Model, and then go down to Extrude. This will open a dialog box, and you can tell it exactly how, how far you want this extruded. Let's say 8 feet. And there's our object, Extruded. The shortcut for extruding is going to be Control e So select an object, Control e It'll ask you how high. Four foot. So that is extrudes. You can also extrude negatively. So you could have things pass below this line down into the negative space. Certain tools, as you get in and start playing, have the ability, such as your rectangle tool, this little thing up here is called Auto Plane. When that is enabled, if it's not enabled, it'll show Layer Plane. But if you click here on the pink Auto Plane, that means with certain tools you can draw on other objects. When it turns blue, it means that that surface can be drawn on. So if we're here, I will draw a rectangle right there. Once I draw that rectangle, it'll turn either the rectangle we drew or the other part of the face, uh, this sort of red, you can then click and grab one of those and push it or pull it however you like. Same thing, you can pull or push. So if I draw another rectangle here and I push that all the way through, we now have a hole in our object. So that is autoplane, and that's great. You can draw other circles and shapes like that. If you want to take that a little bit further, down here on the left we have other tool sets. So this includes things like 3D modeling or the building shell. In 3D modeling, you get tools like these, which will allow you to modify um, existing three-dimensional shape. So push-pull tool, for example, is great. With this one, you can, again, grab a surface, it'll turn red, and you can push or pull that surface however you like. So play with a couple of those. The other one that you, you may want to play with um, in here is our event design. So in here you have things like curtains, stairs, stage units, um, those are all fun to play around with. And then we also have our building shell. And here you have things like walls that you can make. So if you select the wall tool here, as you click around, it'll just start drawing walls for you. They have a door tool. Which you can then come and just drop a door right in the wall. Windows. And of course, you can modify all of this. Um, the window type. Again, if you go over into Object Info, it'll tell you what kind of window it is, what size of window it is, and you can modify a lot of that different stuff. Anyway, that is sort of the quick and dirty. Get in and just start making shapes. Um, I, think, uh, I think that's an important part of this, so that hopefully while we're watching the actual videos, and as you're learning the more detailed, intricate aspects of this program, you can get in and you can start following along and just kind of playing in VectorWorks as we are learning all of this. All right, that's it for me. Thanks very much and uh, appreciate you watching. Bye-bye.